It's our last show of the year, man. Oh. Ready for it? I am. I got a cup full of rum and I'm ready, baby. Indeed. Episode 25. Mm-hmm. That flew by. Yeah, this whole year right? was a blur, it seems. Okay, man. Well, let's get right to it. Let's get into the, the news. Yes, let's do the news, man. Now, I feel like we've talked about the Motley Crue thing to death, but I'm still not done. Because <laughs> they actually had a press conference and made it official, okay? I know. But at least we're getting some feedback from the boys as to what their thought process is, right? Mm. So that's what I thought was interesting. Okay. So what this, the boys have this to is say? Nikki's line of BS. I don't <laughs> know who bullshits more, Motley or Kiss. I don't, I, it's, yeah. a, it's a tie. Yeah. Are you ready, sir? Ready. Honestly, I don't think any of us thought we would ever get back together. We weren't really getting along at that point. Shocker. Yeah. Have they ever got along? We've, we've heard that story yeah. for quite a while. We've been together 35 years. And it had been a lot of years on the road. I don't think we took a lot of time off for ourselves. We were just constantly touring all the time. And when it came to the end, we broke up the band and everybody went their own way. But it was during the making of The Dirt, we started hanging out again together. And then the movie took off and our fans were super stoked. But we also got a new generation of people. And that kind of started the conversation. Uh, We really missed each other. And to be honest with you, we missed being in a band together. So that's the line. Right. That's the line he's towing. Right. Hey, they're going. They're going for it. They're going for it. They got <laughs> no, fingers I, crossed. Yeah, a lot of support acts. Another thing we were talking about though last time was, I was saying how how are they going to top that last show? Right. Because it was just deadly. Right. So Tommy Lee chimes in about that, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm going to shoot myself out of a fucking cannon at this point. <laughs> right. I don't even know what's left to do. We started right. designing the production a couple days ago. We always put everything we have into the design and the production. Always tried to do a show where people walk out going, that was fucking insane. And they do do that. They Guaranteed. They put the money in that show. They did do that, yes, for sure. And he continues, "Uh, there's a lot of new technology right now that we haven't gotten a chance to play with, and we're excited. Mm -hmm. We're starting to put together something incredible, and it's a stadium, so everything's going to be four times as big. (laughs) Whatever that means. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean... They're their own worst enemy when it comes to the show, so we'll see. Right. Have you heard anything about Vince hitting the gym? Or, I have uh, not. Got a gold gym membership or something? Oh, my God, I'm worried about that. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? So this is a stadium tour, like we said. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not diminishing this at all. That's a big venue. But it's not football stadiums. It's baseball. Except for Phoenix, I think. I looked, and they're in the Phoenix football stadium, but they moved the stage up. So football, 60, 70, baseball's 40, 50, 37, 40 in there. It's still yeah. a ton of people. Don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. not saying that. But it is a bit smaller. Right. But anyway, it's still big. So here's what happened. They put tickets on sale the other day, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, became the fastest sellout in the venue's history. 42,000. They sold it out. <laughs> so how do you argue with that? Well... The only argument is, is that there's five bands. Still. So when you got a festival, which is pretty much what that is, that's a a very small, small day <laughs> in a festival, but still, yeah. there's a lot of pull there. Yeah. There's and it's summer. Added, right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Just imagine the porta potties <laughs> at that show. <laughs> the lineups for everything. Oh my God. And debauchery for sure. Yeah. Because you know, even going to Guns N' Roses reunion, <laughs> yeah, I knew what I was going to see. Yeah, and there was a lot I, I don't want to see again. Everybody's you know, just a lot wasted. Of ways. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's debauchery. But, but I mean, they're all way past their prime, so it is impressive that they sold it out. Sure, four bands or not, or whatever. Sure, sure, right. Sure, sure. Another '80s band, it's back together with the original four members. I don't know if this is going to excite you, but I'm a fan. Bullet Boys. Do you like the Bullet Boys? You know what I'm even talking about? <laughs> well, I was thinking Choir Boys, London Choir Boys for a mm-hmm. second, but Bullet Boys, who's that? Their first album came out in 88, yeah. Smooth Up In Ya, you know that song? Okay, and they yeah, did a cover yeah. of the OJs for the love of money. They 
they're more Aerosmith, Van Halen-y. They weren't, mm. they had, you know, hard rock blues kind of edge to them, which right. I kind of gravitate which to. Which I, I like that a lot. And right. Ted Templeman, who produced all the early VH stuff, produced their debut album. Huh. I love their debut album. It's, it's wicked. The second one, not quite as good. And then that, by then, it's early 90s, and yeah. we all know what happened there. <laughs> yeah, they were a little late to the game. Yeah. But anyway, they're back together, and they're kicking off December 30th at the Whiskey A Go-Go, and then they're doing 50 dates next year. You know what's cool, and I think you'll dig this because you're a Tom Waits guy. I do like Tom. They did a cover of Hang On St. Christopher on their second album, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I'm not surprised, though. That, that guy just had attitude that spoke to a, a certain ilk. You yes. know, Really, it did. Yeah. And it suits the kind of the the classic hard rock if it went that way, you know. Yeah, if they it's wanted, a cool cover. It works. It works for me. Yeah, personally. Yeah, I think, I think you'd dig it. Yeah, cool. Another band packing it in with Slayer. Yeah. So November thirtieth at the Forum in Inglewood, California, that was their last concert. Right. Now we could be cynical and say, is it really? Like it never seems to be the last concert with any of these fucking guys. Yeah, I could see Slayer being the end of it for sure. Yeah, Tom Reyes, he addressed the crowd, and he's, he got pretty emotional. He's like, thank you very much. I want to thank you for sharing this time with us. Time is precious, so I thank you for sharing that time with us. Thank you. I'm going to miss you guys. But the most important thing, I want to thank you for being part of my life. Thank you. Good night, and you guys be safe. Right. To the Slayer fans, right. be safe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Slayer guy, but I really respect what they did. They never wavered. No, nope. at not all. one second of it. No, I mean they I was a pure. fan when I was 14, 15, 16, Rain 17. and blood and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Slayer was on. We were skateboarding sure. ramps. It was fast, aggressive metal. Well, it I had mean, a punk aesthetic to it, and right? a bit of that too. Yeah. Right. I mean, these we all looked sure for what was comfortable for us at the time, and mm. they certainly were. But as you get older, that kind of music just. It's hard to to sit down and listen to it at, at length. There wasn't enough melody in it for me. Like, and, I like heavy music. Sure. It was just a little too much. And like I'm saying, you know, when you're that young, you don't need melody. You just wanted the aggression and the speed right. and right. and the amped up quality to it. And, <laughs> right. and the heavy, you know, and the fuck you in your face kind of attitude of yeah. it all. I saw them once because they were an, op they were an opening band. They were opening for Megadeth. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Who I love. And fuck... I don't know what scares me more, Slayer or their fans. Their mm -hmm. fans are fucking crazy. Like, a lot of them left. I could see them leaving after Slayer. Right. Anyone is yeah, Megadeth. Yeah, that's good enough. This one fucking dude, shirt off, of course, <laughs> his entire fucking back, yeah. waist to neck, was the co uh, uh, cover art of Rain and Blood. His back. Really? Wow. Well, you don't fuck with that guy. No. <laughs> You certainly like, don't fuck with his record collection what? of Slayer. That's what? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I'll be over here yeah. where you're not. Yeah. Like we've talked about on previous podcasts, the music we like, you have to, when you go to see live shows, you got to accept the masses that come. Yes, and you do. It's it, does, it does speak to a certain... It can be a challenge. A, a certain group, <laughs> right? And I'm not that group. I'm never, I've, I was never in that group, but I felt comfortable with it at a younger age. But now I'm always very hesitant, you know, I going know. to shows like... Who's going to fuck this up for me today? Oh, you know? God, I know. Who's going to be sitting next to me? Oh, fuck. Uh, speaking of that, <laughs> kind of in the same area, <laughs> okay. Black Label Society is coming back to town. Oh, okay. Right? They postponed uh, due to unforeseen circumstances. So I don't know what happened, but they've postponed another coming back right. in February and March. They're rescheduling a bunch of dates. So they're in Calgary, right. March 7th at Mac Hall. Right. I fucking hate that venue. You can make it sound good in there if you got the right engineer, but again, the type of music Tough. and what they're going to be really doing. And I've seen them so many and times. I've seen them there. You know. Yeah, I've seen them too many times, I think. Like, I love Zach and I love Black Label. I do. But the venue is not going to do it for me, I don't think. I've seen them a couple times. Yeah. And I've seen them open. Like, I've seen them a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't seen them, Oh, by all means. By all means. Zach Fill is your a boots. fucking beast. <laughs> he he is, is a fucking beast, man. Yeah. And he's there, man. He's not just gone through the motions generally. Although no. I, I'm going to back that up because sure. the one time I did see him at Mac Hall, yeah, it seemed like he was not in the mood. It's possible, and that can happen, yeah. you know. And you kind of got to go through it. But he's a fucking incredible oh. player, as you know. But when we saw him do the Sabbath stuff, oh god, 
Oh, that was he a was, highlight. He, of the year. he was he was all there. We'll get to our highlights of yeah, the year later. Okay, right on, right on. <laughs> that that was, that's what I mean. You, you yes. get what you get at that point. Right? Sure. Okay, did you hear about this Billy Eilish Van Halen thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, no, I don't. It was but all over didn't... Twitter. So she's on Kimmel. You know who Billie Eilish is, this young yeah, pop no, star chick? Yeah, no, she's a chick. pop kid's lover. Yeah, yeah. It's unavoidable. I'm not into that at all, but I know who she is. So she's on Kimmel. And yeah. he, as a little bit, he's asking her, you know, about other bands and shit. Mm-hmm. See if she knows who the right. fuck he's talking yeah. about. Yeah, right? anything little... from a generation ago, do you know? It? Exactly. I mean, she's 17. Mm-hmm. Let's keep in mind. Sure. Okay. He goes, can you name a Van Halen? Okay. She goes, who? Kimmel goes, I'm going to start crying. (laughs) She had no idea what he was talking about. Right, right. So Twitter went batshit. Right. On both sides. Right. So you get get Wolfgang Van Halen chiming in. If you haven't heard of Billie Eilish, check her out. She's cool. If you haven't heard of Van Halen, go check them out. They're cool too. Yeah. Music is supposed to bring us together, not divide us. Listen to what you want. Don't shame others. For not knowing what you like. Yeah. I could take a tip from that. Yeah. You could. All right. <laughs> Eddie Trunk. I don't get what the big deal is about Billie Eilish not knowing who Van Halen is. She's not a rock artist. Yeah. And she's 17, and Van Halen hasn't exactly been all that active out there the past 20 years. Mm-hmm. If she played rock and didn't know, I could almost get behind it, right? Mm-hmm. Joe Bonamassa responding to Trunk. Okay. Responding to Eddie Trunk. I get it too, Eddie. A part of being a total musician is embracing all music and diving down the musical rabbit holes. I've listened to B.B. King, Eddie Van Halen, to Frank Sinatra, and back. I was 17 too, but I knew Ron Wood played bass with the Jeff Beck group. Okay? Mm-hmm. So I get both sides of that. I just don't see who, I don't, who gives a shit what Billie Eilish thinks. Yeah, like, you got pop stars. Billie Eilish. Yeah. Or Justin Bieber. I don't think it's a responsibility to know every band and every no. style of music no. if they're into what they're into. Great. Right. So move on. Right. Who cares that she doesn't know yeah. Van Halen? Really? Really. Not her crowd. My daughter could, doesn't know Van Halen. There's a prime example. Ask your kid. Do right. they know Van Halen? If they don't know Van Halen... Are you going to go, what the fuck's wrong with you? No, right. you're not. What type of music are you listening to? Right. And believe me, if you're on a right. Spotify session right. with Billie Eilish in it, you're not going to hear Running With The Fucking Devil. But right? I think there's a difference between listening to music and being a musician. Yeah, so if you say you're a musician, then you need to know Van Halen? I don't think so. I mean, there's some there are all kinds of genres of music with all kinds of players that are going to go into right. a certain direction. They're going, did right. Van Halen mean anything? Maybe they heard the name. That's what's shocking. Hadn't even heard the name. <laughs> but now it's be- that's, right? the si- that's the world we live in. It's very... It's siloed, yeah. Very siloed. Yeah. You look at social media, that's you get more, fed yeah. the shit that yes. you want to see. You don't have time to be going digging. It's more that. And I think that um, Wolfgang yeah, I mean, said, it, said it perfectly, yeah. right? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. People are all getting fucking wild over it. Oh, my God. Who There's cares? other things in this world to be getting wild over than if Billie Eilish has heard of fucking Van Halen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and if it was somebody else, it might be different, right? But, yeah, who cares? Right. It's just It was just funny how right. twisted everybody got. Okay, did you see this picture of Tony Iommi and Robert Plant at the Nashville airport? I found this fascinating. Did you see this? I did not see this. So <laughs> I'll show it. It's literally... If you were at your gate, at two the guys fucking Nashville, there. two dudes standing there. <laughs> one guy's got substantially more hair. Yeah. Like Plant still got the big mane, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It was the two of them and some other dude who wasn't a rock star. And you can see people sitting down in their row of chairs, you know, 10 feet away. Oblivious. Oblivious. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I would not be oblivious. I would be, who the fuck? Oh, I know who that is. <laughs> oh, fuck. How do I not go over there? No, you'd go over. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no doubt in my There's mind. There's no doubt. Anyway, it was just, I was just fascinated by that. These people had no idea. W- were they there for a reason together? Fluke. Fluke. They're just f- both flying out of Nashville, yeah. Wow. For whatever reason. And there they were. Wow. Somebody, click, click. Pretty cool, eh? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. They were looking at something on Iomi's phone. They were just kind of both looking at his phone, and that's the shot. Yeah. But, man. Huh. God, I saw Norm Macdonald in the airport and lost my mind. (laughs) 
called him over. I heard you yelled down the street one time, somebody. We, did, we chatted him up, too. Oh, I yelled at James Hetfield in Vancouver. Mm. By himself. That's what it was, yeah. Fuck. I remember this like it was yesterday. He had the mullet at that time. <laughs> By himself, jeans, fucking T-shirt, uh, cowboy boots, and he's walking, crossing the street. Yeah. By himself. Yeah. I go, Just holy, leave me alone, fucker. I go, holy <laughs> fuck, it's Hatfield. <laughs> he walks uh, by, he's like, hey, how's it going? And I, you know, there's no cell phones then and mm. no autograph shit, but hey, how's it going? Shake his hand and off Still. he went. That's but, what I mean. You're that type of guy. You'll be, you'll be in there you know, pretty quick. But people heard me. So about 10 feet back, he was, now there's people coming up oh, to him. He's fuck. like, probably like, oh, thanks a lot, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, next time wearing a hat, glasses, yeah, I'll be good. Exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, that's all I got, man. A short Not news bad. cycle. Short hey. news cycle, but good. It's good. Yeah, it's hey, good. I could go on and on, but those are the ones that I found interesting. You sure. Know, you can go on and on about the minutiae of all sorts of shit. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's doc review time. Mm -hmm. We watched two, Echo in the Canyon and The Rainbow, both mm -hmm. set in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. but both very, very different stories. Yeah, about the same place, though. Yeah. Right? Give or take. Yeah, just different time, just Since a different era. Since I yeah. Canyon. Yeah. Sure, sure. So we'll start with Echo in the Canyon. So I'll give you the synops. Okay, give, give me the synopsis. Well, you know, but I'll give everybody the synopsis. Sure, give everybody else the synopsis, yeah. And uh, you can take it from there. Okay, sounds good. Echo in the Canyon celebrates the explosion of popular music that came out of L.A.'s Laurel Canyon in the mid-60s as folk went electric. And the birds, the Beach Boys, Buffalo Springfield, Mamas and Papas gave birth to the California sound. Mm. Featuring Jacob Dylan, Bob Dylan's son, the film explores the beginnings of Laurel Canyon music scene. Dylan uncovers never-before-heard personal details behind the bands and the songs and how their music continues to inspire today. Echo in the Canyon contains candid conversations with Brian Wilson, Ringo Starr, Michelle Phillips, Eric Clapton, Stephen Stills, David Crosby, Graham Nash, Roger McGuinn, and Jackson Brown, as well as contemporary musicians they influence, such as Tom Petty, which was his very last interview, I might add, mm. which is a fucking bummer, Beck, Fiona Apple, Cat Power, who I think is awesome, Regina Spector and Nora Jones. There you go. What'd you think? When you mentioned the doc, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's some of that stuff I liked, and so I was kind of interested mm -hmm. in more of the the vibe of that place. You right. know, it couldn't have, it didn't matter who. It was just you knew that they were all living in a very small little area. Right. Like they'd drive to their each of the houses, get high, right, write music drive down the street to somebody else's house. I mean, it's that close. Right? right. So it was everywhere and in a very small little space. The amount of talent in that space was insane. Exactly. And like, so it's fucking weird. why wouldn't you, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, so I want to head up to Mama's and Papa's house and yes. hang out there for a bit and then maybe go and see uh, Graham Nash or right. something. You know, they're all living there. And I didn't feel... I don't know about you, but there wasn't like a bunch of competition. Like everybody was feeding off each other. It was very But at cool. the time, again, that was right? in the late 60s. That's right. No one wanted that kind of heavy, right? <laughs> right. Everything was all just let's let's chill. And if it got heavy, you just left, right? Like you didn't right. want to be around it. That's cool though, eh? Which is which is cool. And the music yeah. definitely wasn't aggressive music, you know, obviously. Right. I liked hearing the stories. Yes. But I'm gonna tell you right now, and I like Jacob Dylan in some of his music and okay. stuff. But for him to carry this show, and I just was so not bummed out, but just not excited because he's not an exciting guy. He, well, he's Jacob Dylan. He's about as exciting as his dad. He's pretty laid back. Right. Like it's yeah. so laid back and just kind of yeah. like, kind of ho hum the whole thing through. I was just, right. it, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't get me that excited, right. you know? And even the other the cats that he had on it, like Beck, he says about eight words, yeah. you know what I mean? And even then, I wonder about some of those connections. It felt like a little bit forced to me as to why they, how they put... And I'm just talking about the doc. I'm not talking Bingo. about the music. Yeah. No, you're reading my mind. Yeah. Why him and why them and why not... Well, we know why Jackson him, Brown was right? fun. It was more engaging than, right. than any of those guys were. Yeah. Right? I agree 100%. I could have lived without the... Coffee table chat. Totally. Like it didn't. Totally. It took. It took me. It could have worked, but it didn't. It didn't. Not with those guys. No. Right? Yeah. That music, man, it just permeates society. It's in movies, it, commercials. It's everywhere, mm -hmm. and I like a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't give me goosebumps or anything. Like no. this does not really move me. But the stories, that was the key. Mm -hmm. Like you said, for yeah. sure. And even the going back and forth to Jacob Dylan's concert there, even that was kind of like I'm not that into it. I just like the interviews. 
And it's worth looking at just for that. Right, exactly. The idea of it all was great, and I think yeah. people should watch it because— Oh, I think so. It was an important time, and yep. again, the nostalgia of always going back to some of their conversations. I mean, who was it? Um, uh, Phillips. Um, Michelle. Michelle Phillips yeah. talking about some of the stuff going on. You know, it's just— <laughs> Yeah, you you like yeah. hearing those stories, man. Just because that music's kind of chill doesn't mean there's some debauchery going on. Exactly, like crazy. exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it was fun, and um, it worth it worth worth the time for sure. Totally. How about seeing Tom Petty right off the top? It was cool and sad all at the same time. It's like, oh man, can't believe he's gone. Yeah, but you yeah. know that he's got that jangly, poppy kind of stuff in a lot of his music. 12-string Rickenbacker. Right. Birds. Oh, yeah, totally. He worships those guys. Exactly. So yeah. he it was important that he was there talking about it and what they could get out of him, you know, at that time. Was... Well, yeah, Roger McGuinn there, he's pretty much started that whole yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Taking folk music and adding the Beatles to it. He just yeah. says it. Yeah, That's no. all they're doing. No, for sure. <laughs> right? But they embraced it, too. They loved oh, it. Oh, yeah. They fucking loved it. It led to Sgt. Sar- Pepper, right? right? Like, the whole thing just fed off each other and... I just, my random notes, Tom Petty's quote, I cannot see something in Mozart that tops the best of Brian Wilson. I thought that was cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's his Mozart, right? Right. Another quote, uh, David Crosby, we were putting good poetry on the radio, Mm. AM radio, which really, when you think about what they were singing about, that's pretty cool. Right. Oh, yeah. Like the 70s were... I remember going on road trips and having those mm-hmm. cassettes. Did we talk about this on a podcast? I don't know if we did about the, the sure. stupid songs, like the kind of the... The one-hit wonder the, AM the stuff? The silly AM stuff. Oh, I stuff. love that stuff, man. Well, there's a love affair, but then there's the... We're talking about lyrics right now. Yeah. you got like uh, Norman, hold the ladder steady, pop AM yes. lyrics. And then you got uh, California Dreamin', which, <laughs> you know, just comes out with beautiful poetry and a yes. wonderful melody and a shiny happy music it's are you saying that's better than bad bad leroy brown <laughs> well jim croce I has his jim. place and Actually, i love jim croce that's a bad example uh, yeah, yeah, I lo- what are you doing i man? love don't him put too. him in that basket i love him too yeah although don't spit into the wind yeah but those were super <laughs> clever right it wasn't just that's was a bad example i love him too yeah, yeah i love him the glaring omissions for me were and i know you can't get everybody all the time but no Joni mitchell mm. no bob dylan you think if anybody would have pulled to get Bob in this, it might have been his kid. But I don't think his dad really had really fit that motif of the California sound. Like that was this was more about the Laurel Canyon California sound. But he could have commented on it. He's a f- fucking folk god. You think they could have maybe got a couple sound bites out of the guy? That's all I'm saying. Possible. I love the ending too. Neil Young in the studio, right. banging the shit out of that Les Paul. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I enjoyed enough of it to make it worthwhile. I like. I, I think it's a fun thing to watch. Yeah. I mean, am I going to watch it over and over again? No. no. But I, I thought somebody did something with the style of music that, yes. Yeah. It's shiny, happy music for a lot of people, and it was the voice of a generation out there. For yeah. Sure. I mean, it led yeah. to what? Fleetwood Mac, Eagles, Linda oh, Ronstadt. Yeah. I mean, it Some all Some really kinda, great stuff. Right? Yeah. Okay, man. So we both liked it to a degree. Yeah. If anything that's done that's produced at that level. It was well done, for sure. It certainly was. Yeah. It just fell short in a couple spots, that's all. All right, just down the hill from that, Randy. Yes. From where that was going down was mm-hmm. a little place called The Rainbow. Where we are a little more comfortable, I think, yeah, down the hill. the rock mecca, as they say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did a little dock on it. Yeah. What's going on about that? Okay, here's the synopsis on that bad boy. Mm-hmm. Ready? Yeah. The Rainbow explores the vast history of Hollywood's famed Rainbow Bar and Grill and Whiskey A Go-Go on the Sunset Strip. Both iconic venues were founded by the late Mario Maglieri. The documentary gives viewers an inside look at the Maglieri family who still own the venue and dedicate their lives to preserving rock history. They continue to maintain its unique and unparalleled atmosphere amidst a strip that has dramatically changed since it first opened its doors in 72. Mario, known as the King of the Sunset Strip... I didn't know anything about this guy, by the way. Not until I seen the film. Helped hundreds of artists get their start in Los Angeles. He frequently came across talented musicians who went on to become platinum sellers. Their pictures line the walls of the rainbow. Oh, God, that's fun to look at, hey? Mm -hmm. The rainbow was Lemmy's favorite place on earth, and along with him, a procession of other rockers, including Ozzy Osbourne, Slash, Gene Simmons, and Lita Ford, 
share some of their favorite stories of both the bow and the strip. The bow. Huh? You like that? Oh. <laughs> it was named after me, kid. So that's the gist. I mean, it's the place is fucking cool as hell. If you haven't been there, you're not going to fully relate to this, but I highly recommend going. So what did you think of the dock and all that? Well, I'm going to first go back to when I went to another Mecca. I went to the Fillmore West and saw a show there. Right. And when you're going down the stairs in there, they got a bunch of photos of these. I've great, been there too, dude. Right? Yeah. So you're, you're that was my first experience in being kind of in a rock and roll yeah, epicenter. Yeah, me too. Right? Just being in there looking at the photos and stuff, I was just kind of taken back, and this is very fucking cool. Hey, you just felt this kind of thing. Yeah. Now, the Rainbow is is a restaurant. It's a little different vibe. Yes. Because you know, it's not a place that people actually played in. Well, they play, like, outside sometimes, it's, but, yeah, right, it's but a it's different... not the same thing. No, it's not. No. But, again, you're just kind of caught looking everywhere and anywhere. You don't want to leave because you don't want to miss anything. And yes. And it kind of just felt like... You felt home. If you're a rocker, you're going to feel at home right there. Yes, the lighting is dark and red, and there's nooks and crannies, like yeah. it's multi-layer. It's, yeah, you can hide out, yeah. you can do whatever. I could see <laughs> yeah. the appeal, yes. right? I mean, yeah. obviously, when I was down there, I had to go sit in Lemmy's chair. Yes, you did. At his machine. <laughs> I took that photo, if <laughs> yes, I'm not mistaken. You did. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's just a rite of passage almost, yeah. because he was... And you always see all about that. And it's crazy when you see where that is. It's outside yeah. on the outdoor patio at the end of that bar. Yeah. And to think he was there so much, anybody could just walk up to him and while he's playing that machine, sure. it was kind of, it was crazy. Yeah. But he felt right at home, obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he moved a block yeah, I know. away. He's, that's what he says. <laughs> his, his dock is always, if you, I would follow this dock up with his dock and uh, that'd right. be a good weekend, you know, a good it's Sunday oh, afternoon. Would it ever, yeah. Oh. But the dock itself. Yeah. I could hear stories about from rock and rollers yep. all fucking day me long. Me too. <laughs> me so, too. So comfort zone, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, for me on this film. Yeah. Uh, I was looking for a bit, a bit more even. Yeah. But that didn't happen. But enough was there to say, okay, yeah, this place was pretty cool. I really liked hearing the story about Mario. Oh, yes. And the family thing. Because, yes. you, I mean, honestly, when I'm going to these places, I don't think about who's running the operation. I'm thinking about no. what it is. But this story gave you that side of it where this has been from the start, this family-run deal, right. where the dad, then the son, and then the son. It's like three generations of this Very family. Cool. Yeah. And you hear from these artists that this guy had a heart, even though yep. when you see him on the film and you could tell oh, that man. this is not a guy you want to fucking cross. <laughs> He's a tough motherfucker. piss off, right? No shit. What's the phrase? He suffered no fools, as they say. Right, right. right? So it's, those kind of stories are also really good because yeah. these are the kind of cats that prop people up, pick them he up when cool they're down. This is fucking He was like awesome a father story. figure to a lot yeah. of these people. Yeah. And they say, they speak really highly of this guy. And, and what was family. cool for me is I had no idea before going into this, who these people were. Not a clue. It was just as much about them that's, as it was the rock exactly. stars. Exactly. And, and that's I what made this fucking cool. Yeah, and I didn't realize they owned the whiskey too. I had no idea. Mm -mm. That was eye-opening. So it was all. It was, it was as much about the whiskey as it was the rainbow, this documentary, which is also Which cool. is fascinating yeah. because I think that, if anything, people are going to associate almost more with that. Well, they're linked because the bands would play at the whiskey and party at the rainbow. It was right there. Sure. Like that's just the, what they would do. Yeah. You know, you always heard about the whiskey a go go. It's just such a cool fucking it's so name. Everything's right? so small. That's what people don't realize how fucking small. Yeah. I right. think it holds two, three hundred people, man. Two hundred, they said. There you go. Two hundred. Two hundred people. It's not like this big <laughs> place to play. You know me, I just random thought boy. It opens with the unveiling of that Lemmy statue, which wasn't there when we were there. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool to revisit and see that, obviously. Yeah. Because right? Lemmy wasn't dead when we were there. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We were hoping a sighting. We did see, we, you know who we did see when we were there was Jeremy. Right. So we Ron, saw Ron. Ron, Ron was there in his right. Crocs. <laughs> in his sweatpants. <laughs> oh my God. Now, <laughs> it is unbelievable to me <laughs> how a guy like that <laughs> yes. has done what he's done as a career. Yes. And can still walk around like that. It's just, it was so off putting in a lot of ways. Like, yeah, no, I don't need you to sign anything for me. <laughs> the fucking hedgehog was there. Holy and fuck. he's interviewed in this doc. Sure, he is. He's yeah. all over the doc. Oh, right? my God. Think of the things 
Mario and well, Ron, whoever, has seen in there. Like, it would blow your mind. But it's true. Like they say, on any given night, there'd be a star celebrity. The night we're there, well, in his own right, Ron Jeremy is a fucking star. Uh, right. And we saw, uh, yeah. sure, he was there hanging out. And being, you know, uber fanboy like I am, I just kept thinking, so Led Zeppelin is in the corner booth. You could walk in there in 1975 and sit in the booth next to him. I mean, that's crazy to me, man. It is. Right? It is nuts. I mean, maybe you wouldn't get that close, but you get, it's an open restaurant to the public. It's not like everything's roped off. Well, there was that upper level. But. The upper level, <laughs> right? That's where the shit really went where, on. Where, yeah. yeah. And oh, I'm fascinated, and, and this is just me, but I am fascinated about Mickey Dolans, who- The in, monkeys. The monkeys, <laughs> right? It's not even a like, real band. Um, to me, that was like the Archies or the whatever, Jughead. Like, it was just yeah. this kind of cheesy kid pop kind of ripoff of the Beatles. Yes. That, but this guy is the founding <laughs> member of the Hollywood Vampires. Yes. It does not register, does not compute in my brain. He must even have been a hell of a partier. Must have been. He's hanging out with Lennon and Dallas Cooper. Must have been. And I, yeah. I just, Keith even Moon. when he's in this film, talking at length a lot. about a lot about it, I'm just like, how? Yeah. <laughs> His name comes up a lot. It hey. really does, man. I know, but, it is weird. But it's a fun little show. Like, it's yep. it's definitely, and it's not that long, you know, it's not a, like a two-hour opus. Well... It's like an if hour there's and a ten. couple if there's a couple negatives. It didn't feel like there was a ton of dough behind it. Sure. Like they clearly didn't get music rights for fuck all, because I think there was a little bit of G and R and the rest of it was just generic. True. And music. It, it, funny you bring up the music, because this yeah. is one comment I had to say was that it turned out it felt like things got sad when I'm watching it. Like the music they chose to <laughs> right. kind of have underneath things was yeah. like, are you trying to to make this something it's not because really this is a celebration of the place not a yeah. you know a, a somber motif you know of well, the dying got, of the rainbow because it got sad when he got cancer in his fucking face like when have you ever heard that yeah, right like yeah, i'm looking at him and you can tell he's got a prosthetic nose on yeah it's the nose you're thing. like it's... something's off and then oh he got cancer in yeah. his face yeah what the fuck? Yeah, I, I get it, but yeah, you're right. The production, yeah, but was, I couldn't care less because I know. I'm you just, got Gene Simmons talking. I'm nitpicking. There's one, you know, one good reason to. Oh, <laughs> my Gene Simmons comment is, oh, the hypocrisy. Yeah, exactly. Why did you bring this guy? He's he's talking about artists faking it. Yeah. They cut to Katy Perry. Oh, I know. Faking her flute, and I'm thinking, really, Gene? You're talking about faking it? How's your buddy Paul doing these days? I know. Like, come I... on, dude. I, I love that. Pulls the flute away, and you can still hear it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just nitpicky shit. I mean, on the positive, they got some great interviews. You know, the money was there for that. It's just, it just felt a little low budge, but it didn't ruin it for me. I, I could listen to it all day, just like you. Okay, to sum up, I think we both dug it. Yeah, it was definitely worth a watch. And I right? mean, fuck, we've been there. It's, we know the stories behind it. We do. The Guns N' Roses video, who didn't see that and want November to be rain, yeah. in the fucking club at that point. Okay, it's new music time. Okay. Let's talk about some albums. Okay, in no particular order. Yeah. We'll start with Taylor Hawkins and the Coattail Riders. Okay. Get the Money, album number three. Mm -hmm. And it's by far the best one. So you have Brent Woods on guitar. He was in Sebastian Box Band. Okay. You got Chris Cheney on bass, Jane's Addiction, and Alanis. Mm -hmm. And you got Taylor, drums and vocals. Right. So what do you think? It's not my thing, really. I mean, I get it, and I get he's 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 got a style that's kind of Beatles, Queen-esque. It's got lots of different genres that are good, but I just don't feel it when he right. sings it somehow. Right. Or the songs. The songs didn't motivate me. I kind of went through it and going, yeah, I want to just hear Foo Fighters and hear you drum and beat the shit out of the drums and stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. You hit it. You hit it perfectly. You, like that? you hit it perfectly with "Stay in Your Lane." <laughs> I get it. You want to go do your thing and you love to yeah. sing. And I mean, he's a great singer in his own way, you know. <clears throat> right. But musically, it was not something that I would gravitate to. I, I listened to it. It was, you know, there was some interesting arrangements and some interesting right. drumming and great singing, you know, in, in his own way, but it's not my cup of tea. It's not like you were turning it off, but you didn't dig it at the same no, time. No, you know, that's that's yeah. the kind of vibe I got from it, you know. Right. Was, it wasn't quite for me. I mean, he had some some 
heavies oh, yes. on this record. There's you know. some guests. There's some guests, which is cool. Yeah, I, I like that, you know, and I was interested yeah. to hear that thing. Joe Walsh, Chrissy Hind. I mean, I love the Pretenders. So, I mean, there was... Yeah, Perry Farrell. Yeah, Perry Farrell is on yeah. this. Love James, Dave right? Grohl's all over it, too. Right. I mean, they got their connections yeah. with these guys, and yeah. why not utilize it? Yeah. I get it totally. Yeah. I just wish that it had something more for me on the record. Right. It didn't have that. Which me. would have been what? Like, I don't know. Just the music that I like right. wasn't quite there. The and X just, Factor wasn't happening. No. No, it wasn't. But even, right. even though he had all this going on, but right. there was a couple like Get the Money was a pretty cool track. Yeah. And Shape of Things, I kind of liked a lot. The cover, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, those are a couple of my favorite tracks. Too. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I dug it. Like, I just, listening to it, and I listened to it a couple times straight through, and I just pictured him having a ball doing it. Like, it just put a smile on my face, because this guy, it's basically his record collection mm -hmm. in these songs. Right. It's Queen, it's Bowie, it's the cards. I mean, it's mm -hmm. everything he likes is in there. And I just got a kick out of it, like, okay, where's he going to go next? Mm -hmm. And I thought the songs were cool and catchy, and I dug it, man. Like, I liked it a lot, actually. Huh. Yeah. The Perry Farrell track, I really blew it. I really blew it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that one. I just thought it was fun, is really the word. Like, it was just a fun album, I thought. Yeah, you could tell this was a kind of a pet project. I mean, he right. doesn't need to do anything really on a status level. No, he no. He wanted to do it on a personal level, and I get that. It just wasn't my thing, I, but but I, yeah. I, I there was some stuff I liked. I get it. You yeah, know? I, I get think it's it. cool, him stepping out, and I'm not just the drummer for Dave. Sure. Look at what I can do. I think I, it's awesome. I get it. I yeah. get it. It's just, yeah, it's, if it's for you, you're going to love it. You know, that's it. But he should have a side project. Fuck, yeah. absolutely you should. As any musician at that level where he's a drummer in a band, but he's got uber talent on a lot of different things and he can sing, Yes, you should be doing that. And it's cool that Dave, well, this is if he wouldn't, but I can give you an example where this didn't work. Mm. It's cool that Dave, hey, go for it. In fact, I'll help you. I'll be on the album or whatever. Right. James Hetfield, for example, mm. Jason Newstead wanted to do that. Yeah. Because... Jason Newstead doesn't get his yeah. songs on a Metallica album. He wanted to do his own thing. No, yeah. he yeah. can't do that. Yeah, isn't Metallica enough? But you can tell. But band. you can tell even with the doc on Metallica that it was a business that was run in a kind of a weird sort of way. That was. Why are you threatened by Jason Newstead playing a bar? I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't get that? that at all. When I think of what? the Foo Fighters, where you know the family arrangement, everybody's got kids. It's it's, it's Come all this. On. Yeah, it's a different vibe, right? But so I think it's fucking cool, and I I like Taylor Hawkins. I just I, it sounds juvenile, but I think he's fucking cool. So I, oh, I think he's a cool dude. Yeah. I just I just don't think his music is quite cool enough for me. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Not on your level. That's right. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not quite cool enough for me, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I really liked it. So mm. that's my story. There you go. You well, know who we missed? Like, we'll just keep going. Duff McKagan's on it. No, he is. Nan he's, on, he's on this uh, Get the Money. He's on Get the too. Money, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nancy Wilson's on it. Mm -hmm. And what was the weird one? A country chick. Leanne Rhymes sings on it. I guess their kids go to school together. I read this. And he runs into her. He's like, Fuck, you want to sing on my album? That's yeah. how easy that was. Yeah. Okay, to sum up, I loved it. You were lukewarm. Would that be fair? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's let's move on. Where are we but going? It's funny you mentioned a country singer. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's another new record out that we're reviewing. Yeah. By the Magpie Salute. Now, yes. I already knew that this would be right up my fucking alley. Odds were. <laughs> Odds were very good. Yes. Odds were very good. And I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> I, I, I love this record. I really like Rich. I just like the whole sound of what he gravitates towards. So I knew it was going to yeah. be good. But yeah. he brings in Alison Krauss, who's That's a right. bluegrass country singer yeah. on this track. She plays fiddle on it. I mean, it was right. just two nice worlds. And I'm and I love Alison Krauss. I mean, I mean, she did. Uh, Raising Sand. Uh, that's all I know. Right. Robert Plant. Yeah, that's right. all I know but, about But her. she was a bluegrass. Yeah. Um, definitely in that world. I, with the yeah. highest of voices and just 
Yeah. I like the Robert Plant album, but Bluegrass, I can't stand Bluegrass, but anyway. See, I like some of it, but um, just the ability, the instrumentation and the Mm -hmm. the speed and, you know, coming from punk, Bluegrass is like country punk. (laughs) That's right. right. It's, Ricky it's, Skaggs. It's total country <laughs> punk. I do everybody go yeah. do yourself a favor and go and download Ricky Skaggs Country Boy. Yeah. The playing on this is <laughs> fucking redonkulous. But anyways, I anyway, just it's yeah. it's funny. We got yeah. two rock records here yeah. where they brought in a country singer. Right. And it fucking works. Like I Yeah, it's good. This the so Magpie <laughs> salute. Uh, I salute you. I salute. <laughs> I salute. <laughs> The uh, well, the effort on this record, and I really loved it. I mean, it's it's, it's black good, right? crows to me. But well, I was gonna say when I heard Chris Robinson say it's a black crows tribute act because he was a bit. This is when they were fighting. Of course they are. As if we're not gonna, gonna like fucking it. say it. And including Rich, there's three guys in the black crows in it: Mark Ford and uh, Sven Pippen yeah, on bass. Yeah. Well, of course it's going to sell like the Black Sure Rose. it does. And so what? <laughs> so what's the fucking problem, right? I loved it. I I mean, I'm a it's big the fan, next best and thing. I would play it. Yeah. In in rotation easy. Really good, hey? Yeah, I yeah. love it. I love There's it. There's no denying it. Okay, so here's my top four tracks on this record. Top four, all right. Uh, well, Sooner or Later is right out of the gate, the first track on this record, and it's awesome. Yeah. You're right away going, fuck, I love this. Oh, yeah. Right? Give Me Something is next, and it's awesome. <laughs> But a little later, there's a song called You and I, which is a really cool track. And I, I mean, he's just got, fuck it. The way he can play, write an acoustic melody and then yep. beef it up. Um, awesome. And Lost Boy with Alison Krauss. Those are great tracks. Yeah. Great fucking I, tracks. Yeah, you get an argument from me. Mm-hmm. And if you have time, there's, another, there's an album before this one. Yeah, it's the first one. Yeah. What was it? Uh, it's the first one. High, high, water, high Water 1. High Water 2, this one right, is. That's yeah. right. That's, we never even said the name of the record, right? <laughs> that, that was a long meeting. <laughs> yeah. What should we call it? Yeah, High Water 2. <laughs> yeah. We agree on that one. Thumbs up. Yeah, yeah I know that the Crows are back together. It's a bit moot, I guess, but still, good music's good music. Who gives a fuck? fuck let Black him Cro- do what he does, because he does it well, man. Let him do what he does. Okay. That's a good segue. Speaking of let them do what they do, Airborne. Yeah. I've been into Airborne since day one, needless to say. Right. I mean, as soon as I heard it, well, this is ACDC meets the Ramones. Totally. How am I not going to like this? It's all about the riff, and it's all about the chorus. Mm -hmm. Every song. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can say it's derivative, but put it on. I'm liking it. There's just no fucking way around it. And this new album, Bone Shaker, album number five, arguably their best one. I mean, when the album cover says, in quotes, this is a fucking rock and roll record, yeah, I'm going to like it. Yeah. No, there's no denying that these guys don't go out and do ballads or do, <laughs> no. you know, controversial or poetry. No. Not at all. And you have to be ready for his voice because, again, yeah. it's one of those things where it's it's right there. <laughs> right there. And there's like this this line that if it crosses that. <laughs> and he's right on it. Right. You, you might have to turn it down or just give yourself a fucking break. But <laughs> right. underneath all that is the hookiest of fucking hard rock, definitely amped up rock and roll. Oh, man. You know, there's, there's sweat, there's... There's sweat. I've seen them twice. They come out sweaty. Yeah. Their, their hair is wet. You can feel it. Shirts off. You can feel it in the <laughs> notes they choose to play, man. It's like, it's they're, that they simple. They haven't even started and they're already wet. <laughs> like, I've seen them twice and they are a fucking blast, dude. Mm-hmm. It's brothers, eh? Joel O'Keefe is the lead vocal, lead guitar player, which right. is, that's different. Yeah. And Ryan O'Keefe's brother on drums. And this Justin Street guy has been there forever. And the newest guy since 2017 is this Matt Harrison cat. Right. But Joel O'Keefe... It's unbelievable. Like, he is just fucking go. Yeah. He's in the crowd, on the bar. He takes beer cans and smashes them into his head till they squirt beer everywhere. Like, it's... If you get a chance to see these guys yeah. run, don't walk... Like, see, that doesn't impress me. I couldn't give a shit about oh, somebody fun. smashing beer into their head. But 
when they can no, I just full tilt thing, go though. out and go, fuck you, I'm going to rock oh, out yeah. for a while here. And they're catchy. Oh, man. Like the hooky guitar rock that they do is... You got to be in the mood for it too. You got to be in. Oh yeah. You know, you, you. It's not like you're going to listen to two hours of this and, <laughs> fuck. You know what I mean? But no. But it's a fun listen, and they're still doing it. And thank God they are. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I'm in. Yeah. If you go on YouTube, you can see they play a lot of festivals. Yeah. And he climbs up the rigging and shit like right like mm-hmm. it's, it's a thing, man. The right. energy level is through right. the roof. Right. And I love that. I love it. It's just go time, man. Take your brain out and rock. That's the last thing I had on here. <laughs> <laughs> it all works perfectly it all, it, fine it for really them. It really does. Yeah, yeah. Okay, two huge thumbs up on Airborne. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Good. Okay, next, Jeff Lynn's ELO from Out of Nowhere. Yeah. Second album from ELO in two decades. Third in more than 30 years. So Jeff's not exactly pumping them out. <laughs> no. I mean, I like ELO. Greatest hits. I'm good. Mm. I'm that guy. Mm. You put this on and it's like, yeah, that's what he does. It sounds exactly like ELO. The, nothing like, has just, nothing like, has changed. And no. even, but but what I found is that what he's singing about seems to be a little dated to what the age of what they're at. I think perhaps it's, yeah. Yeah, it just it, it came out as like I'm gonna go do something that sounds like ELO because that's my sound. And well, that's what he does. That's what yeah. he does, right? Yeah. It sounds sonically great because yes. he's an awesome engineer mm-hmm. and he knows what he wants. The harmonies, well. his whole style, I get it. But it's not my thing. I, I Like you, ELO's greatest hits would do me. It's, and it's still fine. enough. And it's still I, enough. Like, I won't be listening to this. No. I listened not to it a couple all. times. I'm like, okay, I get it. I mean, it is amazing to your point where he... He produces. He not only does he produce, he plays all the guitars, bass, piano, drums, keyboards. He does everything. Yeah. Which is fucking impressive. Right. Like who does that? Yeah. So what what are you gonna do? Right? It's like yeah. this guy. Hey Jeff, can I get it? No, yeah. sit down. <laughs> he knows what he wants to do. It's yeah. obviously him that's leading the, the the charge on this thing. Well, if there's a criticism of him, as brilliant as he clearly is, yeah, is when he produces somebody like George Harrison or Tom Petty. It sounds like him. Oh yeah. I mean that's good. Like and the bad. traveling Wilburys was Or Full Moon Fever. Full Moon Fever. That's all Jeff Lynn. Right. I mean it's good and, and bad. And they let him do it. Yes. But again, that's back to my point about Right. They're even saying, No, you you do it. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna Right. You got a vision for this thing. Yeah. He's got a stamp. And Mutt Lang's the same. A lot of these guys, yeah. they've got their if you want that, you get it. Yeah, that's yeah. Off you go. Yeah, and yeah. Off you go to sell a gazillion albums, by the way. I don't know if this is gonna sell a gazillion albums. No, no, no. Albums. I mean yeah. stuff he produces. Sure, for sure. Instantly. But, but this thing is like, yeah, did I need to to know this record? Not really. If you're a hardcore ELO person, you're gonna love it. Sure. But if you're not, like sure. you're casual like us, yeah. it's whatever. Yeah. The one yeah. song, and there's a video for it, it's that uh, Time of Your Life, and mm. I do have that Blu-ray. Mm. It's about that show they did at Wembley. Mm. 60 thou, they sold it out. And the fucking, this Blu-ray is awesome. The stage is incredible. You know that f- yeah, I think I saw flying it. saucer mm-hmm. thing they have on top? It's And it's just amazing. The only downside to the, con- <laughs> the concert Blu-ray is too many shots of middle age dorky white people in the crowd and that's who's gonna <laughs> honestly in my opinion show the is band. one that's gonna care to listen to this record oh my that's god it. yeah Okay, so eh, I'm, I'm I mean, jet. it was you know okay. Yeah. He's still doing his thing, but it's still doing his thing. At we the respect end of the day. him, but yeah. Next, Michael Monroe, One Man Gang, solo album number ten. Yeah, he was the singer for Hanoi Rocks. For people who don't know, and if people who don't know who Hanoi Rocks is, they kind of had their breakthrough album about '84, and I was all over it. Mm-hmm. Like they had a video for Up Around the Bend CCR cover, mm-hmm. and it was all over MTV. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who are these guys? Mm-hmm. And you could see how especially Guns N' Roses later, ripped them off mm-hmm. look-wise. And, oh, yeah. and then Razzle died with Vince Neil in that car crash, and that was basically the end of the band. Right. So off Michael Monroe goes, and he's on solo album number 10. And he's one of these guys, it baffles me, this guy, he can't break through. As awesome as he is... I don't understand it, because I, the... I don't get it either. The list of these records, when we talked about what we were going to do... What does he have to do? I wasn't sure what I was going to think about this record. Yeah. But it's probably my 
second or my favorite or my second favorite out of all the I'm records. I'm a bit surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Because it had that pop punk sensibility to it. Yes. That I love. The whole fucking record to me was awesome. Well, dude, all his albums basically sound like that. Right. <laughs> and I, I, get, I get it. He hasn't, like, he hasn't changed. He hasn't, but, but no. it's still, and the mood I was in was like, wow, fuck, I needed this today. And this record gave it to me, man, big time. I don't, I don't know what that X factor is. Yeah, it's not there. Like he, he stays over there in Finland yeah. and tours yeah. Europe and yeah. draws. Yeah, Todd Kearns played in his band for a bit. Yeah, it baffles me. Mm -hmm. But I keep listening to him. Keep uh, telling people to listen to him. I like it. Yeah, and he's cool as hell. Uh, yeah, and, and I he, mean, again, it's just funny that band just didn't. You'd hear about it on the smoke doors or whatever in junior high and high school hanoi hanoi right? yeah but they right when they were peaking that it was over that's I the know. shame and i know he, he revived the name later with a couple albums that you know didn't really mm -hmm. go anywhere either mm -hmm. and then he went back to the solo stuff but yeah it's really too bad what happened there because they were poised to really they could have broke the states because they already were breaking the states and, and and again you get a few big bands that start coming up and say they love you Exactly. That just happens. Oh, right? yeah. It just didn't happen. It, it just didn't. Yeah. But tragedy. anyway, listen to Michael Monroe. Yeah, I mean, fuck. This guy that's is a great record. Awesome. It's a fucking great record. And it's such a feel-good record, man. Right. Like, it's fucking feel-good. I like it. it. I like you liking it. Well, last it. Train to Tokyo. Yeah. Phil Campbell, oh. former guitarist of Motorhead, mm. released an album called Old Lion Still Roar. Mm. Now, what Love the, the fucking name. Yes, I do too. Mm. What this is, and more guys should do this, Eddie Van Halen, fucking Jimmy Page, take note. <laughs> Make a fucking album, have a different singer on every song. Slash, Slash did, it. did it. Tony Iommi's done it. Mm. Do that. Mm -hmm. This is what this is. Mm -hmm. So you got Halford. You got uh, Alice Cooper. You got D. Snyder. Uh, Whitfield Crane from Muggy Kid Joe's on it. He does a thing with Satch, Joe Satriani. Mm -hmm. I love this idea. Mm -hmm. And this album rips. You already know when you got Phil Campbell from Motorhead, who's been in the band since fucking the early 80s. And underrated as hell. Sure, but he's got a style, right? Yes, he and does. And you can feel it on all the tracks. Now, I'm not a big fan of probably half the singers on this record, but it wasn't about the singing for me. It was about right. the songs. Right. And how they they were Phil Campbell songs. Right. And... It worked. It it, it, it doesn't oh, it doesn't stick into a place of all heavy Motorhead style of music. There's no ebbs and all. flows to this whole record. No, and it gives him that opportunity. But it's a fun but record, and it it's, is. It's, a, it's all over the place in a lot of ways, but yeah. still kept that grounded Phil Campbell kind of aesthetic. Lemmy would be proud. That's what I my last thought on that. Yeah, right. I think yeah. it was cool because here's what he could have done. He could have went out. And played, you know, bars, playing Motorhead songs all night. Oh, yeah. He didn't do that. Yeah. I, this is way cooler. Yeah. Right? Totally. All right. We both love that one. I awesome. Like yeah. Okay. Last but not least, in the spirit of the Christmas season, Let's go. as you can see, <laughs> yes. we've got a lot of Christmas uh, albums here. That's, yes. We're not going to review them all, but well, we got James Brown. We got Billy Idol, Reverend Horton Heat, Twisted Sister. This one kills me because every song sounds, sounds like we're not going to take it. <laughs> oh, does it? <laughs> Pretty much. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it. Yeah. But I brought this one for a reason. Oh, Bad Religion. Yeah, I well, have that one too. I, I brought Bad Religion and maybe set up the Christmas record we're going to talk about and then I'll get the correlation. So, yeah, I've got a ton of Christmas music and I like Christmas mu music. Just depends who's doing it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think it's fun and I, I dig it. Mm -hmm. So the reason this is coming up is Rob Halford, his second Christmas album called Celestial. Yeah. His first one is right here. This bad boy right here. Winter songs. Right. Under the Halford banner, not Rob Halford, but like it matters. It's him right. wailing away, mm -hmm. and it's it's fun hearing mm -hmm. his voice. 
yeah. scream joy to the world <laughs> is just fun. So this is nothing to be taken super seriously at all. It's just fun and it's Christmas music and off you go. So what you have here is a bunch of Christmas songs and four original ones. What's interesting, Bo, I don't know if you knew this, but the band is his brother, Nigel, on drums. This no, I didn't know me. this. So his brother's yeah. on drums. Yeah. It's a family affair. Right. His nephew, Alex, on bass. So his nephew is the son right. of Ian Hill, who's in Priest. Ah. Married Rob's sister. Okay. Follow that? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They met at a party with a family uh, reunion thing. I, yeah, I guess done. so. Backstage at a pre-show. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Are we related? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, his sister, Sue, plays bells. And Robert Jones is on guitar and this guy named John Blakely on guitar. So it's kind of a family affair. And I right. guess they, Rob kind of kept his distance. They arranged all the music and everything. And then he just came in. Right. He wanted to give them their due. Right. So he came in and sang his ass off over it, basically is what, what happened. Again, it's just fun. It's not something you take seriously and dissect. And <laughs> no, and I wasn't going to dissect it, yeah. but I brought this for a reason. Because yeah. Rob Helford, yes. Christmas music has a place. Yeah. Okay. And now there's... There's stuff that can kind of work for me with Christmas music, yeah. and there's a few examples of that in here, right? Like James Brown. Oh, that album's awesome! Fucking awesome, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and Bad Religion works really well yeah. for me in that sense. But Rob Halford, I can't. You can't. I, do I it? have a hard time. I have a hard time <laughs> wanting to listen to that. Where, well, at least with Bad Religion, they got some fun pop harmonies and stuff right. like that with some heavy fast it's a bit heavy it's it, it, it. so so yeah. he, he just pushed it the other way too much for me where it was if i'm right. going to hear that i'd rather a trans siberian orchestra fucking rocking out right then then rob halford screaming over top of it well it just didn't did the connection didn't work for you're me, not going to get from one to 12 tracks it's one in one sitting of course not but i just made me laugh like one of the originals called donner and blitzen and he's yeah. just screaming it oh i know i know and it's just full-on heavy he's got this nice bell thing off the yeah. top and it's like little nice little ambience going on for about a minute you're getting in the christmas spirit and then see that's i put all my christmas music on a uh, shuffle yeah so something little like little that comes up, up yeah, and just yeah. jars you sure sure <laughs> These are good too, man. I'm sure you have them. Mary Axmas. Yeah, I got the. There's two of those as far yeah, as I'm. It's all aware. instrumental. Yeah, yeah. So you got Satriani, Vi, Jeff Beck, yeah. uh, Zach Wild, Ted Nugent. They're really good. Yeah. 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 And the Billy Idol one's pretty good, actually. The King, though, has the best one. I. This is incredible. Like, which really one did good. I bring? I brought Elvis this one. Presley. Uh, yeah. If Every Day Was Like Christmas. Oh my God, it's good. Yeah. I mean, you got to. Christmas for me, you got to have some Elvis on there. Oh, and, man. Uh, it's all good. But also Christmas time for me. Is this, <laughs> right here. this. Now, if you're not familiar, if you're not familiar. For you Americans listening. For, yeah. For <laughs> you, the American tribe. Bob and Doug McKenzie, is, they did this record and it came out at Christmas. I don't know what year it was. But they got a 12 Days of Christmas on here that's just right. awesome. And it's just super fun kind of look at Canada at the time and... Well, I got to say that Ear Candy's Christmas card this year in my studio, uh, we send out Christmas cards yeah, to clients. And this year, I the, the front of the card is on the 13th day of Christmas. Of course. <laughs> you open it up. Santa says, Kulu, ku, 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 ku. <laughs> And good day. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> For you Americans out there. Yeah. That was their handle. Yeah. That's that's totally theme it. song, I guess. You could, yeah, you know, yeah. and they got Getty singing. It's yeah. awesome. It's awesome. That's funny. Okay, so yeah. Rob Halford, small doses, I'm good. The connection didn't work for me. It's a disconnect. I, I, it really was. I just love his I voice. mean, I get the opposite. I get this the bad religion coming out and doing this pop punk type right. thing is super fun to listen to. Hark! The Herald Angels sing. The way they, the way they do that track is right. awesome. But when I think of Halford, it just doesn't seem like it fits to me. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I dig it, man. What can I say? Okay, let's close this show talking about like some of our favorite things that happened this year. I mean, it never seems to end. Like, people say rock is dead. Well, I went to, and you went to, some of these overlap, but personally, I went to 25 concerts this year. 
some small, some big. Well, if rock's dead, I'm not sure how that happens. And we, we reviewed a ton of great rock albums. No, there's no shortage of it. No. There's no, Todd Kearns the other day was saying how yeah. it's fuck, no, rock isn't fucking dead. And it isn't. But yeah. you have to look for it. It takes a bit of work and we love That's doing, right. we love doing the work and right. we'll, we'll tell you. Right. Well, let's start with concerts. I mean, the highlight for me obviously was the Stones, followed closely by Aerosmith. I mean, these, these guys are all getting it done yeah. in a big way. Yeah. You yeah, know. for me, Stones yeah. was my biggest concert this talk. year, and it's pretty, pretty hard. <laughs> it wasn't Greta Van Fleet. It's pretty hard. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, how do you top the Stones, for fuck's sake? Rain Wolf? Yeah. That was cool. That was cool. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, corrosion I want... of Conformity. Yes, Corrosion <laughs> of Conformity. I went to Jack White. You went to John Five. Mm -hmm. Slash. Ghost was surprisingly good. Yeah. Holy shit. I really enjoyed that one. I'm a sucker for that anthem rock too, though. Oh Just, man, you feel the chorus, man. Don't bore us. Get to the chorus. Yeah. Uh, well, we mentioned Zach Sabbath, how phenomenal that was. Mm -hmm. Reverend Horton Heat was fun. Mm -hmm. Billy Idol was a lot of fun. Yeah. Fucking Iron Maiden was incredible. I know you missed that one, but I did. It was wicked. I did. Rival fucking sons. Anytime you can we see this band, you should fucking make a point of it. Can't fucking say kids. enough Just about that. Please don't don't miss out. Nashville Pussy. I, I enjoy that was that was in my top five this year. I saw the Tea Party and they were awesome as always. The D Tenacious D was fun. And we saw Took. And we saw Took and Sticks mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. When this kind of overlaps, but musically, I mean, a lot of great albums. Right, Rival Sons was the album of the year for me for sure. Slash's album was great. Gary Clark Jr., for fuck's sake. I mean, we got to see him at some point. <laughs> oh, Actually, he'd probably be at the top of my list, off the top of my head, to mm. see. Yeah. Mm. Stray Cats, Duff McKagan, The Heavy. How awesome was that album? Holy fuck. Yeah. Come like on. That's, that's on a, that was on a pretty high rotation for oh. a while. Tyler Bryant. I mean... I've been into him for a while, but that new album really took it to another level for me. I want to see this kid too. Yeah, he's definitely showed up because I had no idea. Man. And now I'm, you know, seeing a bunch more of his stuff. And, and he's a kid. He's pretty social media savvy. Yes, he is. Big time. Yeah. Again, the, back to the point. This is how you got to do it now, right? Absolutely. It's not, it's, uh, and that's yeah. how you're going to find out some of this shit. That's right. right. But again, it takes time out of your day to, you have to be passionate about it, man. Right. Springsteen, that was a great album. Rack on Tours, Tool, Darkness, I liked, but you weren't a fan of that one. Beth Hart, like that album is fucking wicked. Hey? Yeah. And Volbeat, that album is great too. But anyway, yeah. See, Volbeat reminds me of Bad Religion. Right. I could see that. Punky poppy. Yep. Kind of. Right. But fuck, I love listening to it. It makes me feel good yeah. when I hear it. And back to new bands, Joyous Wolf was cool. Bishop Gunn, The Struts, Greta, Dirty Honey. I mean, these bands and Tyler Bryant, like these bands are coming up, man, and they're, they're young. So that's yeah. encouraging, you know? Yeah. One of my favorite things of this year was getting introduced to um, Tales from the Tour Bus. Right. That was fun. Hey, I hope he makes more of those. I really do because yeah. those two seasons, and I mean, I blew through them so fucking fast. That was a highlight for me this year was to get I caught up agree. in that. Uh well, biopics, we're going to see more of these because Rocket Man was huge, even though I didn't like it. And Bohemian Rhapsody was huge. The Dirt was big, whether you like it or not. It was big on mm -hmm. Netflix. So I don't know who's next, but we're going to see more of these. Yeah. And there's a lot of guys that are at that plateau of their career, right. their age of their career, yeah. where a biopic makes a lot of sense. Uh, Def Leppard got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. And anytime a rock band gets in, it's good. I thought The Cure was great to get into the yeah, rock and roll fame. Absolutely. I mean, yep. just some stuff there that's just... We want Priest in next. That's what we want. Well, when is that out? That's in February, March? Ne early next year. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we'll be pulling ours. You know what got by me? <laughs> I, I, I know you for a long time, so you're not going to care about this, but what got by me was uh, Bob Seger played his last show November 1st in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and I'm a huge Seger fan. Yeah. And I've seen him once. Yeah, I got the notch, but uh, yeah, so he's done. I, well, see. maybe he isn't, but he says he's done. Yeah, it's amazing how one song can kill it for somebody. Because old time rock and roll. Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't like it either. But he's got no, a thousand songs. I know, and I mean, yeah, you know, turn the page and stuff like that. But I mean, that was a hard one. Night moves. Rock and roll never forgets. Right. Roll me away. I, I get it, but again, yeah. it's got to be your cup of tea. Oh yeah. And uh, something about it just said, ah, I can't, can't. Oh, love him.
Okay, man. Well, I mean, that's unless you got something to add. That, I mean, those are the highlights for me, man. Like that was that was a lot. <laughs> that was a good year for rock, I think. And when I was thinking about this last episode, I mean, reflecting, I mean, we started doing this thing. When we get together, all we talk about is music, and we just thought, well, hey, maybe somebody would be interested in hear, hearing us babble our, on our, our conversations. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, clearly, some people are. Mm -hmm. And if you're push and play, fucking thanks. That's yeah. Really. If you're downloading push and play, thanks, man. Because, yes, we love doing this, but if nobody's listening and nobody's watching, what the fuck's the point? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we want you engaged. And But you know what? Let, it's like know. a rock star going out and playing a club with 12 people in it. But we got 12 ears that are really well, we, interested in what we had to yes. say. I'm not going to disappoint. No. If I can let you down, right? I'm so, just saying I don't want zero. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. So let's keep it, keep it yeah. on that level. But it's, ah, you know, I, I don't know. I just look forward to it every time. And yeah. I look forward to the homework too, because I mean, I wish I had more time for it. It's, like anything yeah. else. Like when you're a kid, yeah. all you got is fucking time. Yes. And then, fuck, I read every magazine front to fucking back and 18 times. And then, Every well, insert of every record, yes. you know, same type of thing. Right now, it's not so easy. So if we if we allow you to escape and go yeah. into that world a little yeah. bit with the new music we're talking about or the old stories we're telling or the whatever, I mean, hey, it's uh, it's, it's because we fucking love it. Well, I'm fucking done. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, Merry Christmas and an hey. empty glass, brother. Happy New Year, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let there be peace on earth. Goodwill towards rock. rock.